Just caught up with uh, Richie McNeil in pit lane. Uh, first race of the Formula 600, so it's an open championship now. Uh, you had a few problems, tell us about it. Um, yeah, I was finding it hard just to keep a tight line for the racing line. So I've done a couple of adjustments and I had a couple of problems uh, just when I was braking, getting into the corners. I was finding it hard to get down from third to second, so my dad's changed a few things, so hopefully it goes well in the next race. And hopefully you won't have to make any adjustments whilst you're actually out on circuit. Yeah, I had to change my steering damper, it goes softer to try and turn better, so hopefully I'll not have to do that to lose a bit more time. Well, we'll look out for you, number 22 in Formula 600s. That leads us nicely into the second race for Formula 600s. Robin, over to you. Thanks very much, Steve. Yes, the motorbike accident law, Formula 600s here at Anglesey, Thunder Sport GB. And there we see the man of the moment, uh, Chris Mort, the race winner from earlier on, and what an emphatic race win it was from, there we see Richie McNeil beside him on the grid, number 22 from Northern Ireland. There, number five, Johnny Hagenbottom over from the Isle of Man for the weekend. Great to have him here. Outside of that front row then is number 16, Craig Sproston. And there we see Chris Moore. And this, Steve, really is a uh, man on a mission. I think uh, it's fair to say his season really starting here at Anglesey this weekend. Yes, the uh, championship has kicked off for Chris Mort, and if he can get another win here, then there would only be a handful of points between himself, Richard McNeil, and Sam Hornsey, who's absent. But again, a lightning start for number 22, Richard McNeil. But this time, Chris Mort's got the better of uh, Craig Sproston and moves into second position. There's Ben Scranich just behind Adam Oliver. Yeah, fantastic start once again for Richard McNeil. And there'll be a lot of people on the pit wall and throughout the paddock uh, just hoping on his behalf that he can put together a whole race to match his absolutely electric starts. Well, up the hill they run. The first time of asking into Rocket. Chris Moore up there in second. Craig Sprosson, another good start for him, Steve. Yes, there he is on the silver and green machine, uh, just in the top three. And there's uh, Hagen Bottom, number five, battling it out with uh, Ben Field. And Field is having a look up the inside into Peel. It's tight round there. And he's down, Robin, he's down. That's such a... Well, I've not seen many uh, overtaking manoeuvres stick into Peel. And once again, Ben Field, unfortunately, just another statistic. Yeah, great shame for Ben. Raced so well earlier on, got up to finish in third place. But, well, uh, at least we saw him walk away from it. And at the moment, at the front, not walking away from anything at the moment. Richie McNeil still got to Chris Mort as Pillion there. And Mort looks, oh, what a... That's the same manoeuvre we saw him do twice in the earlier race. He does it so beautifully. Just tucks in underneath at that uh, banked corner of banking, of course. And uh, does Richie McNeil like a kipper there. Mort to the front. Richie McNeil in second. And Craig Sproston, there he is in third place. Well, as you mentioned earlier, that is called the banking for a reason. It's uh, at an angle, and it does mean that if you can get all your braking done and all your gear changing, you can carry a little bit more corner speed in there. And that's what Chris Moore's been doing so far. Oh, he nearly made a bit of an error there into Rocket in, however, but it looks like uh, he's got past Richard McNeil, who may have uh, overcome his problems from race one and doesn't look like he's making any adjustments on circuit this time. There's shots of Sproston still in third, doing reasonably well to hang on to the duo out front. But, uh, well, it's all down now to Richard McNeil. Can he keep up with Chris Moore? As we see Adam Oliver and Ben Scranage and Hegginbottom just making their way through the corkscrew also. Yep, Johnny Hegginbottom there in sixth place, just on the back of that group. But uh, a great battle from Adam Oliver and Ben Scranage in the earlier race. And the two of them, well, they're at it again. Look at this, side by side, coming down in the bank. And Scranage just tucks underneath there. The number 11 machine moving up. Well, Adam Oliver tries to come back at him at church. Can't quite find a way through. Uh, they were doing this right the way through the first race. And uh, they're at it again as Chris Moore pulls away slightly at the front. Craig Sproston there, Steve, just lining up Richie McNeil. Yeah, I don't think Richie McNeil's going to do anything too silly, though, because, uh, as I mentioned at the start, a good bundle of points here would put just a few points between Hornsey, Mort and McNeil overall. And I think McNeil has to confess that he's not as quick as Chris Moore round here. Just take the points and go to Cadwell Park and see if you can get the win there. Yeah, the key to this is stay on the machine, of course. Ben Scranage there. Uh, 
just putting a tiny bit of a gap on Adam Oliver, and that's probably the greatest distance that's been between the two of them for the entire weekend as the leaders come down through the corkscrew. And there we see Scranage and Adam Oliver, uh, number 51. Adam's uh, Honda there in that, uh, that deep custard yellow. Yes, Adam Oliver was a championship contender last season in the Formula 600 until uh, quite a nasty accident, uh, I believe, at Brands Hatch, which put him out. There were so many contenders in the Formula 600s last year that went falling and uh, couldn't contend in the championship. Thinking of Chris Mort in particular, Daryl Cox, um, plenty of riders that had a chance to beat Mike Price but couldn't quite get there. Maybe it's a different story this year as we watch uh, Chris Mort then heading into Rocket Inn. Very comfortable weekend here for the Malpass rider. Yep, everything working his way. Craig Sprosten in second place. Good long look over the shoulder as he came up the straight all along by the sea there. Just having a check to see where Richard McNeil was and well, he's, oh, goodness me, that's Ben Scranage, and that looks like a mechanical problem. Oh, that is cruel. Well, uh, been, we've been robbed of seeing the, uh, the battle there between himself and Adam Oliver, but what a great shame for Ben Scranage. Uh, as we were saying in the other 600 race earlier, you do not want to DNF. This is a critical time of the season. You want to hang on to the points bag, and at the moment, that's what Chris Mort's doing out the front. Craig Sprosten in second, Richie McNeil in third, but it's going to be no score on the board for Ben Scranage. No, but he can, of course, drop this round if he chooses to. One person that won't be dropping this round is Chris Mort. Three wins out of three for him at Anglesey. A classic performance from number 34. Yep, fastest lap of the race to him as well. And yes, number one, I think that probably means. <laughs> Acknowledging uh, the applause there on the banking. And a good win for Chris Mort in the motorbike accident law Formula 600s from Craig Sproston, Richie McNeil third, Adam Oliver fourth, Johnny Hagenbottom fifth, and Peter Sutherland finished sixth. There we see the podium in the middle, Chris Mort, surrounded by Craig Sprosson and Richie McNeil. In the standings, well, Sam Hornsey still has it in the points, but only just. Chris Mort gets to within four points of the lead of the championship.